Instead, regard Christ the Lord as holy in your hearts. Whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to defend it. Welcome to this service of worship. We are glad that you are with us. We do have a few community notes um, that you will find at the end of the video. But in this moment, let us further prepare for worship together, making use of the questions that are before you. People look east, the time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Trim the hearth and set the table. People look east and sing today. Love the guest is on the way. Furrows be glad, though earth is bare, one more seed is planted there. Give up your strength, the seed to nourish, that in course the flower may flourish. People look east and sing today, love the roses on the way. Birds, though you long have ceased to build, guard the nest that must be filled. Even the hour when wings are frozen, God for fledging time has chosen. People look east and sing today, love the bird is on the way. Stars keep the watch, the night is dim. One more light the bowl shall brim. Shining beyond the frosty weather, bright as sun and moon together. People look east and sing today. Love, the star is on the way. Angels announce with shouts of mirth, Christ who brings new life to earth. Set every peak and valley humming with the word, the Lord is coming. People look east and sing today, love the Lord is on the way. God's gift to us is peace. Even though it comes at God's initiation, we put restrictions, even obstacles, on opening and enjoying it. It's important for us to admit when we're wrong so that we're better in better shape to hear what God has to say to us. And so let us begin with silent prayer. God of peace, it must be frustrating how easily we pass on the gifts you offer. It must be aggravating when we refuse to see things your way. Lord, we know it upsets you when we fight and hurt one another. We know you grieve the distance or sins placed between you and us. May your gift of peace prevail in us and in how we choose to live. Help us get there, please. Gratefully, we pray this. Thank you for listening, God. Amen.
we love good news. We pine for it, especially given our collective exorbitant ex- obsession, right, with bad news. We complain openly about the media's constant bombarding us with sensationalized, melodramatic waves of bad upon bad news layered with copious amounts of opinion or or analysis. But for the media, y'all, let's face it, money talks. And money for them is viewership and clicks, and we view and click on the bad stuff. We do that. If good news really was our preference, the networks would press it because that's where the money would be. But as it happens, we as a public seem to thrive on bad news. We also thrive on sharing it, especially when it doesn't have to do with us or we perceive that it won't put us at a disadvantage. Schadenfreude seems to be the order of the day when it comes to seeing enemies or opponents get their just desserts or watching other people dissemble at their own misfortune only to have the sordid details of their lives be publicized. We gossip fairly shamelessly and rationalize our own judgmental bias. And a question God has for us in the midst of all of it gets lost in the noise. For what do you hope? What do you hope happens to you, to yours, to your community, to the world? What do you really hope comes to be? What do you hope God will do to bring everything to heal to God's will and the transformation of the earth? And whatever it is you hope for, how do you express it? And then we have to ask, how can we speak of hope in a world like ours? How can God ask us, ask this of us? Well, it's simple. Because God hopes. In an act of unfettered, unjustifiable faith, God sends Jesus. The Word made flesh comes utterly vulnerable and without the protections of a military or political force. Mary and Joseph are effectively nobodies in, in, in either camp. They are not famous or upper class. They're, they're not, well, you know, as it turns out, they're about as ordinary as people can get. And, and that's the beauty of the hope that God sets up for us. That's the heart of the good news and of the peace that God is authoring in our midst. It is not meant to be extraordinary or special or spectacular. It comes to ordinary people in an ordinary place by ordinary means. It's even announced, y'all, to ordinary bottom-rung workers. This is Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. Listen for the word of God to us all for our ongoing place in God's story. Nearby shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel, praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, meaning no disrespect, but shepherding wasn't exactly considered top-tier work. I mean, it was nothing like being a king or some Roman official or, or soldier or a Pharisee. I mean, shepherds were not 
well-regarded merchants or community leaders. They weren't people of particular influence. And it wasn't quick work. A fisherman could get an immediate return on their work, assuming they caught anything. Farmers could, could know in a season whether the harvest would be good if they grew anything. A shepherd might wait years before knowing whether their lambs would amount to anything. And it was thankless. And it's to these people that the angels shared the most important news in the universe. I mean, really, have you ever wondered why God didn't share this angelic vision with the royal court or, or with the religious leadership or even just wealthier people? People in a position to really influence. People in a position to make policy and really get the path ready for Jesus. I mean, why does God do the incarnation in such an ordinary fashion? I think God taking this direction, though, is precisely why God's notions of peace are real and possible and within reach. I think God doing things this way reassures us that we have a place in making peace happen. When the shepherds got the message, I mean, they had a choice. They weren't ordered to go find the Christ child. They decided to go and find and see for themselves. What did they say? Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. This is what they said. They chose on their own to share what they had been told. God only knows what happened with them in the years that Jesus was growing up. I mean, maybe like the sheep work of their profession, they were used to waiting. It is telling to me that one of the problems of our technologically computer-driven age is profound impatience. A computer is, is, is praised for its speed. A car is praised for its speed. A restaurant is praised for its speed. A nation's economy is praised for its speed and growth. A church is praised for how fast it grows. No one says, wow, that's amazingly slow growth. That's really great. Or, you know, I am glad that it took 40 years for that to happen. Nobody says anything like that. But it was, it was centuries after the last vestiges of the exile before the promise of the Messiah was finally fulfilled. And y'all, it may be years, years beyond our own before we realize the before we have the realization of the peace that God's angels have promised to the shepherds and so then the question becomes well wait a minute why why wait but you know the real question is really why work why work for peace if we're not going to see it ourselves why work for peace if the benefits of it are going to be out of reach why not follow the advice of Ecclesiastes and squeeze all the enjoyment out of our work that we can? Just as a caveat, that's not really what the book says, but I encourage you to read it and see for yourselves. But what I am saying is that I am to work for peace because God is counting on me. I am to work for peace because I'm benefiting from the work of those who came before me. I am to work for peace because my present circumstance is not the only thing that matters. I am to work for peace because it's worth doing even if it fails. I am to work for peace because I am a part of humanity. I'm a part of the humanity that God has created. I mean, like the shepherds, I am to work for peace because God took the time to let me know about Jesus' arrival. <laughs> okay. Great. So, so now I know my mission. I'm ready, God. Let's do this. What am I doing exactly? I mean, how do I work for peace in a world like this? How do, how do I work for peace given the kind of life that I've led? What does God expect of me? Well, to put it simply, I am to share God's hope. Well, it really can't be that simple, can it? Well, actually, it can. Yes, it can. I mean, whenever I take a chance on helping someone, I do so in the hope that it will make a difference. There's, there's no guarantee. I mean, whenever I take a, a chance on changing direction, I do so in the hope that transformation is possible. There's no guarantee. 
Whenever I stand up for someone or help with someone's yard or hold someone's hand or offer my shoulder or sing like it's my last or encourage someone or, or, or tell a hard truth to someone or admit the truth to myself, there's no guarantee about the results. But I do it all in the hope, for the hope, that God has placed in me. And so the author of 1 Peter 3 verse 15 echoes the decision of the shepherds in this encouragement to the entire church and to us. Instead, regard Christ the Lord as holy in your hearts. Whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to defend it. Thus, it's not about what you can prove. It's not really even about who you can get to agree with you. It's not even about, about having no doubt. God never asks us to do that. God expects us to act on the hope revealed by the birth of Christ, by the life of Jesus. God expects us to move as though the promises of God are already realized. God wants this for us because God loves us. Sharing the news of Christ with, with our lives is for our good. Thus telling the story defends us against everything that would steal our hope. So go tell it on the mountain and sing Gloria in excelsis. Take up God's invitation to be a part of the peace that God authors for all people and the hope God defends with the very life of a newborn Christ. Thanks be to God and Merry Christmas. Amen. So in this moment, as we um, light the Advent wreath, we are reminded that we began with hope. Um, and then the second week we talked about Christ. We talked about God's love coming in Christ. And then we sang our hearts out talking about the joy that God offers us. And we round out our themes of Advent, of course, with the candle of peace. And in our defense of that peace, we find ourselves coming full circle back to hope and the understanding that this is what Christ gives To us. Amen.
So God doesn't just bless us at Christmas um, or, or Thanksgiving or Easter or any other special occasion. God blesses us on every occasion. And, and God blesses us not just so that we can be distinguished from those who might not get the same blessings. God blesses us for a purpose. You see, God chooses to bless us abundantly. And we should respond by choosing to be blessings abundantly. And this is why we should give always and share what we have and who we are. Let us reflect on this together and let us pray the prayer that is before you. Let there be no doubt, great God, you bless us and we are grateful. Let there be no doubt, great God, we should be blessings in turn. As we receive the gifts you provide, may the gifts we are meant to be emerge. In the great name of Jesus Christ, we pray this together. Amen. As we say the prayer, do the prayers of the people together, um, there will be an obvious opportunity for you to be able to to um, to put forward your personal prayers and we just pray that you would take that opportunity um, take advantage of it it w- again it will be obvious um, and if you find that you need more time than the video allows pause the video continue praying and then resume but in this way let us pray together the prayers of the people the Lord be with you and also with you. Jesus, I adore you. Lay my life before you. How I love you. Lord God, we arrive once again at Christmas, and we are desperate for it to be different than before. We want it to be magical and fun and uplifting, and it can be all those things and more. Teach us, teach us to want to be different. Teach us to make room for you rather than expecting you to make room for us. Teach us to trust you as much as you showed your trust in us by the birth of Christ. Let us be ready to tell your story, the story of you in our lives, the story of you working in us and in the world around us. Let us tell the story of your hope, your love, your joy, and the peace you want for the earth. May we be mindful then to be peacemakers, peacemaking with our time, peacemaking with our trust, peacemaking with our hopes, peacemaking with our strengths, peacemaking with our stuff, peacemaking in our beliefs, peacemaking like you are. Great God, help us be peacemaking in the face of so many and so much that we can name, especially as we now lift up to you our personal prayers. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for transforming us. Thank you for the giving of the Holy Spirit to each of us. Thank you for teaching us even how to pray when words fail us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us together say our benediction. Telling the story defends us against everything that would steal our hope. Get up, take heart. Jesus is still calling you. And as you go, may the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds this day and forevermore. Amen. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. As we mentioned to you, we do have some community notes, um, even as we go into Christmas and, and anticipate the new year, beginning with the idea of real peace. You see, the peace God offers isn't about glossing over our pains or wounds or calamities. It is about addressing them and empowering us to respond with integrity, strength, and love. In other words, in a real way. This means entering into Christmas unafraid of the news. This means entering into health challenges, job changes, church changes, the new year bolstered by God's peace. And so, as you gather and as you celebrate and as you reflect and remember, Merry Christmas and open yourself to the peace that God offers. We um, also anticipate as we move into the new year, following into or using the Follow Me series to go into a new um, Bible study series, Honor Sabbath, that will begin on January the 7th with the um, community breakfast. Um, Everyone's invited, but um, the study materials are available and we encourage you to avail yourselves of them um, and to make use of them as we go. The Sunday evening service, Faith at Night, um, is yet looking for a worship leader. If you've got any ideas about that, please do um, let us know and we'll be happy to pursue them, and to continue working to find the right person for the job. We also encourage people um, with all the changes going around, going on in our neighborhood, um, to make the most of the opportunities to express yourselves, to make your voices heard. And so the upcoming Mebbin City Council meeting is on January the 8th, and um, in in um, in the city building, and we encourage you to to go even though we technically are not part of we are not in this um, mebbin city limits nevertheless all the changes that take place that mebbin decides affect us directly and so again go as you will and speak to all of these matters we also um, want to remind you that giving is still possible and necessary and needed Um, as it happens. And so sometimes with the arrival of Christmas, it it does seem like everything stops, but y'all, the needs of the community march on. And so if you find you do have the opportunity, spend some time helping out in our local shelters and food banks, checking in on folks, and even donating money. Leave yourself open to the possibilities even in this last week of the year. And thanks so much. And Merry Christmas.